On this edition of Talk of the Town, Tracy Lingefelter from CPAC joins me to talk about the First Responder Variety Show. That ought to be fun. And Dominic Kroc from Southeastern Med will actually join me for two segments talking about all things concussion. That is all today on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios in downtown Cambridge, Ohio, it's Talk of the Town. And welcome to what we're going to call a brand new era of Talk of the Town. It's Jeremy Scott. Normally, I feel like I kind of have it on repeat. I kind of feel like a broken record when I'm always here saying, filling in for the Reverend Perry Baranich. But guess what? The Reverend Perry Baranich has decided to go be a Reverend full time. And so you're stuck with me. The B team is now the A team, ladies and gentlemen. And here we are live from the U.S. Bank Studios. Really excited to be doing this. Uh, for those who don't know, my name is Jeremy Scott. You might know me from the radio side of things. You can hear me each and every weekday morning, 6 until 10 on 96.7, a.k.a. 96 FM. Still WCMJ Cambridge, but we don't use the WCMJ other than for legal purposes because the FCC says we have to. The FCC also mandates that we keep this show clean, so I'm going to do my best. Don't guarantee you anything, but we are going to try. Folks, I could not be more thrilled to be joined by my first guest as the full-time host of the show. You know him as the face and the voice of CPAC, <laughs> CPAC, the Cambridge Performing Arts Center. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got the one, the only, Tracy Lingefelter with me. <laughs> Tracy, welcome to Talk of the Town. Jeremy, it's great to be here. I didn't even realize that I was going to be your first in a new era. So congratulations on the gig and thanks for having us here. Hey man, I appreciate that so much. Happy to usher it in with a guy of your caliber, a guy of your <laughs> distinction. Let's talk a little bit about why you were here though. You were here actually for something that I believe is new to CPAC. You guys have never done this before, this first responders variety show? That's right. So kind of what led to this is we, we unfortunately got into a situation where we canceled the children's show, the kids show for summer, which uh, being a nonprofit organization, that is a huge source of income for us. So to kind of supplement that, I thought, let's, let's think of some things that we could do to really get the community more engaged and uh, kind of give back a little bit as well. So come up with this uh, variety show that's going to be a fundraising event for the Cambridge Performing Arts Center. And I wanted to bring in some of the local law enforcement first responders. So we have Cambridge uh, Police Department, the Sheriff's Department, uh, the Fire Department, and Highway Patrol, United Ambulance. They're all getting involved, and uh, it's going to be a great deal for us. Now, that's really exciting. Let's talk a little bit about when this is going on, first of all, before we delve too deeply into the details about the show itself. Sure. So this event's going to be held on Saturday, August 18th at CPAC. Doors will open up at 6 p.m. The show will begin at 7. Okay, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. I do believe the flyer actually states, but it's more like 7 p.m. to question mark, as any good party is. That's right. You never want to shut the lights off until the last act is done, and if we keep going on, we'll keep going on. Absolutely. So that is coming up the same day as the car show downtown, I believe. It is. And that'll be great because people will be able to go to the car show, either with their rides or just as spectators, and they'll be able to go home because I think the judging gets underway around 4 p.m or maybe even wraps up around 4 p.m. as has been tradition in years past. So then that'll enable them to go home and take a shower and so on and so forth, maybe grab some to eat and then come right back to downtown Cambridge for this thing that we are calling the First Responders Variety Show. Now, whenever we think about a variety show, Tracy, we think about singing and dancing, maybe some comedic acts. Do you know exactly what's going to be taking place? And so that's kind of what, what the premise is going to be. We're, we're going to certainly invite people to come in to do a, like an open mic type of format. So if you want to bring in musical instruments, you want to do some acapella, you want to do some karaoke, if you're just hilarious behind the scenes, we're asking you to come up front and, uh, and let us hear your comedy act. But so in addition to having an open mic night, like I said, we want to really focus on the first responders. So those guys are also going to be coming in and doing some demonstrations uh, with canines, with some personal protection type of demonstrations and things like that. Well, it sounds to me like this is kind of taking on a life of its own. For those who don't know, Tracy, I was one of the great judges. I don't want to say great judges, but I was <laughs> one of the judges of what turned out to be an awesome time, a great time. Downtown Cambridge for First Friday, you guys had your lip sync contest for the youths. 
right. of the area, right. as it were. But even though you build it as a lip sync contest, it kind of grew its own legs, so to speak. It became a karaoke show more than anything. Now, Absolutely. some people still did lip sync, but a lot of them decided to actually sing along to the music and dance along to the music. And like I said, it kind of grew its own legs. It sounds to me like this first responders variety show is kind of doing the same thing because even though, again, you think of a variety show as singing and dancing and comedy, a lot of it is going to become public demonstrations and that kind of thing. And I don't think that's something that you mind. No, not at all. And, and it's especially the way that the, the kids show did. You know, we started, we built as a certain event. Um, and then I filled a bunch of questions and, and some people were asking me, would you mind if this was more of a karaoke type of setting? I said, absolutely not. So let's just go ahead and open it up. If you want to karaoke, great. If you want to lip sync, perfect. If you want to dance, great. And we had such positive feedback. I mean, the kids were obviously great. You were there. Yes. Um, the judges, not too bad. Um, there's, a, there's a video floating around you might <laughs> be aware of. Where, oh, our opening so. number. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It did change. Um, and, you know, we want to basically give to the people that are going to come and watch these events exactly what they want to see. And so we may build something as a variety show um, and demonstration, but the more people that re reach out to us and say that they're interested in doing something, if it's family friendly, we'd love to have it. Yes, and this is going to be a great time again. That's coming up on Saturday, August the 18th. And something that you had mentioned, Tracy, not only is this for first responders, even though it's being built as the first responders variety show, you are actually going to open up to the general public. So if people are interested in getting involved with this, maybe they are somebody who can sing in the shower. Maybe they've been <laughs> perfecting their comedy routine in front of the mirror. Whatever the case may be, if somebody out there would like to get involved with this, what's the best way of registering to be a part of this? So probably the easiest way is through social media, which everything, that's where we typically get a lot of our information. Um, Cambridge Performing Arts Center has a Facebook page. Um, you can reach out there, um, send me a message on Facebook, or you can also get in touch with me directly on my cell phone. Uh, the number is 740-255-1557. And for people who don't know, Tracy, for people who might not know some of these first responders, you have a lot of personalities there. You see them in their serious <laughs> uniforms and their serious vehicles, but really and truly when they're off duty, they are cards. And I know that from having worked with them on this side of things, on the radio side of things, these guys and gals really and truly have a lot of personality. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of the things they come up with. As a mind and talk with these guys, they're really excited about being out there. Um, you, you know, they're no different than any of us. They have a job to do and, and just being able to see them at, you know, an event like this is going to be a lot of fun. Again, that is coming up August the 18th at 7 p.m. at CPAC, the First Responders Variety Show. Tracy Lingefelter, hey, it's been a pleasure having you on as my first guest in this new era of Talk of the Town. Amazing. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. We'll be back with more Talk of the Town live from the U.S. Bank Studios right after this. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew bring you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm and warmth. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a great place to live, work, and play. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash yrptv and be sure to subscribe. Back here at the U.S. Bank Studios, it is Talk of the Town. My name is Jeremy Scott, and folks, join me right now on set. He originally was part of the Croc Dynasty down in Noble County, 
But it's like he told me off these airwaves. He said, I have created my own dynasty up here in Guernsey County. However, you do still see him sometimes down in Noble County because, well, let's just put it this way. Southeastern Med, when they talk about being part of Southeastern Ohio, they are all over Southeastern Ohio. And you see his face on camera right now. He is Dominic Croc. He is the Director of Rehabilitation Services with Southeastern Med. Good to see you, Dominic. Congratulations, too, on the new position. Hey, thank so. you very much. Having a lot of fun up here. But you are here to talk about something that you've really heard a lot about in recent years, especially when it comes to sports medicine. I'm talking about concussion management. What can Southeastern Med do for concussion management? Well, thanks, Jeremy, for, uh, for having us on. One, concussion management is really, with the Ohio High School Association, became a huge issue over the last years. And as you have more and more uh, professional athletes being identified with issues and CTE uh, as well and post uh, concussive issues the schools want to make sure we're more proactive now for us one of the things we've always had a concussion program we just haven't really advertised it and one of the things uh, it, you joke around about a, a dynasty is, is not so much for me but as Southeastern Med is we want to be the provider for Guernsey and Noble Counties and we've slowly grown that tremendously in the last several years as we've uh, acquired new schools we're contracting with this, uh, this year Caldwell as well as Shenandoah last year we also uh, serve Meadowbrook, Cambridge and John Glenn. With that as we expand we also want to make sure that as we add athletic trainers who have always held our concussion programs at the schools. We've also wanted to make sure we have a, a unified team throughout. Uh, with us in particular, we have now looked at our needs, looked at what uh, was needed in the area, and we trained our physical therapists to also be able to perform impact, become impact certified, which is a test that is done pre and post. So if somebody has a concussion, after their concussion, you can test them again to see where their baseline was and how much they've changed. And with that, we're trying to really unify the entire team. Uh, concussions, depending upon the research that you read, is anywhere from one to 21 people are injured and have one within a thousand people. So mm. it ranges very largely as well as, as we get, uh, as kids get older, and they develop faster and the need to get bigger, faster, stronger happens. And you have some kids, especially in Biddy League, people don't always think of concussions there. Mm -hmm. Because you, have a, you can have a discrepancy on, a, say, a third grader, one that is a tiny for their age and one that's at the 99th percentile. That person who's at the maximum weight, they don't feel like they're hitting as hard, but they can really ring somebody's bell. Oh, yeah. On top of that is concussions are more than just sports. And that's what people forget about. If you've ever been in a car accident, we see people who fall off ladders all the time or hit their head at work, uh, things along that lines. One of the reasons we wanted to make sure is our rehab team internally had the same tools as our athletic trainers who have always done an outstanding job have done. And so that's really where we're trying to grow. On top of, we have a complete gamut of services. In addition to, we have a sports medicine physician on site. If you don't have a, a physician, we have one who specializes and has the abilities to further uh, keep that team and unity coordinated. Absolutely. Now, when you're talking about some of these schools that you're contracted with, mm -hmm. do a lot of them have on-site trainers? Do a lot of them have full-time uh, trainers on staff? Or is it just that you guys go and you fill that role for them? No, we, we at Cambridge, Meadowbrook, and John Glenn specifically, we have full-time trainers. Mm -hmm. In Noble County, uh, the, the schools have elected to do game trainers as well as it's a more limited contract. But ultimately, they have a trainer who will be at the schools on a regular basis. And then we also offer... Uh, uh, clinic hours where if an athlete is injured they can come and meet with one of our trainers so that if you belong to one of those partnering schools we will get you taken care of you know and and if we find that you need more advanced services or you need uh, probably not advanced services but you need more one-on-one -on -one care then we can also have you referred into the clinic and we can take care of you through physical or occupational or even speech therapy we really want to be the rehab provider in the area, and again, for us to be able to do that, we looked at our entire gamut of services, and we wanted to make sure that we're offering the best care we can in the area. And I'm biased. I'm very biased. We have an awesome team of people. I'm just blessed to be able to lead them. Um, so realistically, when, it, when we talk about the role of Southeastern Med, it's been building long before me and just trying to continue that and not screw it up in the meantime. So. <laughs> now, Dominic, I'm not a doctor. I am a sports fan, though. So I'm curious as to what your opinion on this will be. The movie Concussion, how accurate is that? How accurate a portrayal is that when it comes to displaying what those concussion symptoms are like and what kind of far-reaching effects concussions can have? 
uh, I, I'll have to plead ignorance. I haven't seen the movie. Okay. I apologize. Um, but as far as concussions and far-reaching effects, if you have repeated concussions, it can be very real. Uh, I was reading about a, um, a recent uh, retired professional quarterback who was having a hard time just remembering their name. Uh, without going into specifics of individual people's issues, or at least it's public, but uh, right. they, it can be, it can be, it can, it's, it's basically a brain injury in the long run. You know, it doesn't mean one concussion means that you're going to have massive brain injury issues, but when you have repeated ones and you're in sports that have high incidences of them, in this particular case in our area, football, soccer, with headers, people don't realize because uh, soccer can be one of those higher incident sports. Lacrosse, even though as lacrosse develops in some of the schools around here, there's more and more hitting. Um, those all, all those things can have a, a long-lasting and prolonged effect. The other part is, is research, it used to be we would put you in a corner, shut the lights off, and let you rest. We've also found that with the, the newest treatments, that's not necessarily always the best. And that's where bringing a professional like us in, we want to make sure we guide you through that. The Ohio High School Association has also has a recommended five-day return to play program, which we do, to make sure that you're able to go from beginning, starting with rest, no symptoms, all the way up to sports-specific activity. And that's really what we're trying to do. Dominic, this is such an interesting topic, and I know a lot of people out there are very interested in it just because, again, it's something that you're hearing a lot more in the mainstream these days. Can you stick around for a second segment? Absolutely. Okay, we'll have more with Dominic Kroc, the Director of Rehabilitative Services with Southeastern Med, coming up right here on Talk of the Town. Talk of the Town will be right back. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a great place to live, work, and play. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Back at U.S. Bank Studios, it's Jeremy Scott. It is Talk of the Town. We've been speaking with Dominic Kroc. He is the Director of Real Rehabilitative Services with Southeastern Med. And he's going to stick around for a second segment because we got so deeply into the, the, the concussion side of things that uh, I figured, hey, listen, there's a lot more we can talk about. Now, Dominic, I'm going to tell you, I actually have a family member who played hockey as a youth. And he played hockey all throughout grade school, into high school even. By the time he was done playing hockey, I believe they found that he had had five concussions during that time, just during the 15 or so years that he had played hockey, again, from Mighty Might up through high school. One of the symptoms that he always talked about was dizziness. Now, is dizziness a symptom of concussions? I mean, how exactly does dizziness play into that whole thing? Well, that's, a, that's a great question, and yes, it, dizziness can be a symptom. Uh, one of the things which is, I think, unique to our specific concussion specialists as well, we're also certifi Herdman certified uh, vestibular specialists or dizzy specialists as well. So not only are we able to treat the specifics with concussions, we also have the ability to treat dizziness. We know with our physical therapy side that dizziness will affect one in, five, or one in two Americans throughout their lifetime at oh, some point. Oh, wow, yeah. Now, with that, dizziness can be attributed to multiple things. It can be uh, attributed to your medications. It can be attributed to cardiovascular issues, stroke issues, uh, neurological issues, brain injuries. It also can be attributed to quality 
issues such as uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, basically crystals uh, with, uh, in, in short, uh, basically crystals like a carpenter's level, the bubble, if you will, mm -hmm. will be put on the wrong side of the level and will cause you to feel dizziness. You may have a hearing loss and woke up with a, a vestibular attack or a, have an infection in one ear and that can cause the room to spin and feel dizzy. Those are the kind of things that we focus on. Our physicians in the area are outstanding in identifying life and death issues. Did you have a stroke? Did you have, uh, are you having a heart attack? Did you have a, a traumatic brain injury that needs immediate care? The problem often becomes that physical therapy has taken over. Once those things are taken away and we know that you're, for lack of a better term, not dying, mm -hmm. now it becomes quality of life. How do I go down the steps and not feel like I'm gonna fall because I feel a little lightheaded? Sometimes it's as, as simple as cardiovascularly if we've kind of, especially in the winter time, we're a little bit out of shape because we haven't got outside as much, we're retired potentially, and our cardiovascular system has a little bit of delay just because we're out of shape. I know for me, unfortunately, uh, I run after little kids all the time, but I'm not in the shape I used to be in when I was 21, and sometimes if you're in a hurry, you eh, get a little lightheaded and jump up. Our, our goal is to identify those things, provide a plan to help you, and if there's something specific with, for example, the crystals I was talking about, there's things called repositionings that we can do to help you with that. Uh, and, and it certainly does tag team with our concussion. So when we identified our staff members who wanted to, to do this, our, our vestibular specialists were happy to support our athletic trainers again and to work in conjunction with our concussions. And you talk about your, your cousin. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, actually, she, when she was uh, just turned eight, but when she was six, on our trampoline, she hit her head. The, the padding oh. on the pipe just happened to come undone. And a bunch of kids were jumping on it and knocked herself out. She's had a concussion. Mm -hmm. So it's not just athletes. I mean, it can be anybody in their daily lives. As a result, the same thing can be said for dizziness. You know, some of the other dizziness symptoms that we'll treat if the room feels like you're, it's spinning or it could be stress. We, we've had people all the time, our bodies get in, tighten up muscles and will make us feel dizzy. So working on and having that gamut and tools in your bag of identifying that you have tight muscles and we need to work on that or relaxation techniques. Those are all things that we work with with the patient. Let's talk about some more symptoms that people might identify when it comes to concussions, Dominic. Obviously dizziness, one of them. Another one I know that's really big, some of the mental problems that can result mm -hmm. from that. I want to talk about the depression, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely a real symptom as well, or at least a really big effect and a really big long-term effect of concussions. It is, especially for the people with more uh, severe or repeated concussions. Anytime you have an injury, whether it's from a concussion or it's from something else, depression can definitely play a role in that. And it's unfortunate. The problem with concussions is there's, there's objective symptoms, but they're not always uh, easily identified. Or the other part is, is there more of a feeling based on what the patient has? So part of our role is we've got to learn how to um, interview patients and be able to pull those out so that we can get an accurate assessment of what's going on. And one of the things is when you think about it, I know for me sometimes it's great in healthcare, I forget names. So I, 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 it's easy to not be uh, in HIPAA breach of you know, identifying confidentiality, but the downside is there's times when you're like, oh, what is their name again? Yeah. I recognize faces and I'll say, oh, how's your shoulder? Uh -huh. And recognize those things, but uh, when you're somebody who has that and you find little things start to slip by you, they creep up on you. And that really can lead to just what is wrong with me and a feeling of, of sadness as well as depression. And those are all things that why we work as a multidisciplinary team. As a physical therapist or athletic trainer, we may not be dealing specifically with things that can help that directly, such as meds or counseling, uh, even though we have some very baseline counseling uh, educational background just for the fact I think every healthcare professional has a, a course but that certainly doesn't qualify us to be those practitioners. Uh, but we also need to be quick to identify it, or if we can't, get you back to your referring physician so we can make sure that you're taken care of appropriately. Dominic, you know, we're almost out of time here. I wish we could sit here and talk all day about concussions because it's such an interesting topic of conversation. If people are interested in finding out more about what you guys can do for them, what's the best place for them to find that information? We have a couple places, Jeremy. One, with our athletic trainers, if it's at one of the partnering schools, talk to your athletic trainer and we'll be happy to, to work with you as best we can. If not, feel free. We have three locations to choose from, one in Caldwell, 
We have and two in Cambridge, one at the main hospital and one at our 660 facility. And then the other part is we're, we're really going to work on our social media campaign and we're, we have Facebook posts that are going to be developing as well as we're going to be interviewing different staff who have a role in this program so that you can put a face to a name. One of the things about being a, a small hospital is it's about the people. We don't want it to become lost in a number and that's really what our, our department is really striving to do. We have a specialist in every area and every school that we partner with as well as if you don't have one there you can come to us through our main rehab and take care of you. Southeastern Meds Rehabilitative Services always growing, always developing. Dominic Kroc, the director of said services. It's a pleasure to have you Thank on you, the Jeremy. show and I hope that we can do this again sometime down the road. Very good. It is Jeremy Scott from the U.S. Bank Studios and we'll be back to wrap up Talk of the Town right here on Cambridge TV 2 as well as on YouTube. Talk of the Town will be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Thanks again to my guests for this edition of Talk of the Town, Tracy Lingefelter from CPAC, as well as Dominic Kroc from Southeastern Med. Folks, I actually misspoke as we came out of that last segment. I said Cambridge TV 2, old habits die hard, what can I say? However, you still can catch us on Spectrum Cable. We're just up the road a little bit, channel 1021, so what is that? 1,019 channels, give or take, from Cambridge TV 2. It's all good, you know. But yes, we still are on Spectrum Cable. We are just on channel 1021. Of course, you can always view all the past episodes of Talk of the Town. If you miss Perry Baranich's smiling face, they're all available on demand on YouTube, YRP TV. For our producer, Adam Green, and all the fine folks of U.S. Bank who lend us this space to do this thing we call Talk of the Town, my name is Jeremy Scott saying, have yourself a fantastic day and night.